Good morning. Happy Monday. Yeah, I'll say those two words in the same phrase. Why not? Happy Monday. Good to have you with us here. And we certainly hope your Easter celebration was all that you could have wanted it to be. We're here on the day after with a town meeting talk show and a very fascinating conversation. I'm looking forward to bringing this one to you because selfishly, it, for me, reinforces some principles that I have considered very important for the broadcast industry that I've been part of my whole life and also the right way, the most effective way to be a community. Something that, as Leslie and I communicate every Christmas, that we have yet to see anywhere else that we've ever lived. The focus of this program, if you've heard the promos, actually has to do with a symposium coming up for Alaska Native entities. It's in a few, three, a little over three weeks. And I got a PSA about it. And it was just one of those things as I read it that I thought, you know, it might be interesting to dig in a little farther here and uh, get some more of the details. And I'm really glad that I did. I hope you will be too as you listen today. First off, big thanks to our sponsors or sponsor, Cordova Wireless Communications, which is, of course, your local provider of cell phones and wireless data service. And that local provider is the provider of your local talk show, the town meeting program, which we're able to do thanks to their help for these many, many years. The announcement that I got said the Alaska Tribal Administrators Association and the Alaska Native Village Corporation Association is hosting a three-day symposium in April to strengthen partnerships and prepare effective leaders to bring funding back to rural communities. And of course, we've been hearing a lot about funding as a result of the pandemic, uh, a couple of uh, bills that passed in D.C., the names of which escape me, but uh, our guests will, will bring them back up. And tribes and native corporations have some particular opportunities to make really good use of these funds in a way that can't be done by any other entity. And both guests have described this amount of funding headed Alaska's way as once in a lifetime. And so the two entities are combining their efforts to make sure they're maximizing their cooperation to not duplicate efforts, to help things be more than the sum of their parts, and be ready to respond effectively when these funds start to come into the state. You'll learn all about that. Again, both of our guests had a lot to say about it. Teresa Jacobson is the founder and director of the Alaska Tribal Administrators Association, and they, they were founded to promote the development and sustainability of strong and effective tribal administration. Their mission, they say, is to develop a collaborative atmosphere and knowledge sharing along with professional support among Alaska's tribal administrative professionals, and to promote effective tribal administration resulting in greater self-governance, community sustainability, and leadership. And they point out that all the information that they gather and process is shared to all tribes in Alaska, regardless of membership. Curtis McQueen is the executive director of the Alaska Native Village Corporation Association, Their mission, they say, is to promote the success of village corporations and protection of native lands. And their vision to support that mission includes projects and activities that provide education to village corporations, advocacy for village corporations, outreach to and inclusion of village corporations statewide, and village corporation sustainability. And again, the thing that's fascinating to me here is that There's sort of a voice representing our two primary native entities in Cordova. Teresa speaks largely with the tribal voice analogous to our native village of EAC, whereas Curtis is more of a native corporation voice like the EAC Corporation. But the thing I think you'll hear is this vision for cooperation, this harmony between these two types of entity and the realization of how important it is for them to work together. 
And of course, any of us that have lived here for a while know that there have been, there have occasionally been challenging times between the village and the corporation, at least many, many years ago when Les and I first got here, there were, there were some people, and I don't know if it was inst- largely institutional or if it was just a few people on either side stirring things up, but there were challenges there. I haven't heard much about that personally recently, but uh, what you'll hear is uh, a vision for how to get everybody on the same page and maximize opportunity. So let's get into that. I hope you'll find it as interesting a chat as I did. Teresa Jacobson and Curtis McQueen talking about the three-day symposium in April, combining the Alaska Tribal Administrators Association, or the ATAA, and the Alaska Native Village Corporation Association, or ANVCA. Teresa Jacobson represents the ATAA, and Curtis McQueen, the ANVCA. Those are our guests on today's town meeting. Teresa, why don't we start with introductions here? Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be involved in all of this. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Teresa Jacobson. I've been working with tribes for uh, a couple of decades now, and I have my own business. But I did, in working with tribes, I realized that there was a, a, a need for support for uh, the tribal administrator. And that's where ATA came from. It was really just based on that need. Okay. And Curtis, how about you? Uh, yeah, I have been, um, I've worked in several different positions, but I am a tribal citizen of uh, Central Council, Clink and Haida, Indian Tribes of Alaska from Southeast. I'm also formally adopted from the Eklutna Denina here in Anchorage. Uh, most recently served uh, close to 15 years as an executive, uh, most of all uh, CEO for the Village Corporation of Eklutna before I joined uh, ANVCA. And we represent about 176 active village corporations throughout Alaska. Okay. And and just so we establish connections with Cordova, Curtis, uh, what, what, what has been the, between the folks who are organizing this symposium and, and contact with Cordova, what kind of relationships have there been there? Well, ANVCA was formed in 2010 to mimic uh, what was called the Alaska Regional Association. So all 12 regional corporations had their own association. They worked very closely with each other and on joint causes and issues that uh, were like-minded. Uh, there were many more village corporations, and although the regional corporations did a good job of reaching down and lifting us up, we recognize that um, if we unified and formed our own association, we'd have a more organized, louder voice. And so in 2010, that was formed. I can remember very early on the EAC Corporation, uh, the folks from Cordova area got very involved with the association, even joining some of the uh, land committees. And um, uh, Brendan Kane, I believe, is still an executive over there at EAC, has been very involved. Um, and uh, everything from contaminated lands uh, to issues in Washington, D.C., to issues in Juneau, it's a larger united voice. And so you can take each one of the regions, and here in Anchorage, Siri has eight village corporations underneath them, right? So we represent the village corporations under all the different regions, and Cordova being one of the regions. Okay. How about you, Teresa? Much interaction with Cordova or Cordovans? Um, we have an ATAA, so you know, is a, um, you know, all tribes are members of ATAA. Uh, in order to vote, you do need to be a paid member, but the information that we provide to membership goes out to all tribes. Uh, so we, you know, we encourage folks from that region to participate. And I have individually had interaction with the big folks in uh, Cordova uh, from the tribe. Good. All right. Well, I'm I'm glad there's a tie there. I mean, it, in the with the preliminary information I got that made me interested in being able to visit with you, it looked like there was certainly that possibility. So let's get to the symposium, Teresa. Can you kind of establish what the we'll get into when it is and where it is, but what what is what's the point of it? Why why is this being put together and what's the goal? Well, the, thank you for that. For the reason that we decided to, what, what ATA refers to ANBCA as its sister nonprofit, because village corporations and tribes are serving the same people. So Curtis and I sat down and, and thought, well, we're serving the same people. We've got uh, all of this money coming into the state. You know, who better than to have that discussion in those two entities? And it just made sense because, you know, and you'll see this on the symposium website. When we work together, 
we support our communities. And we felt that that was very, very important. You know, and sometimes we say, you know, the tribe is the heart of the community. Maybe the village corporation can be that muscle to support them. Okay. Curtis, anything to add to that as far as why it's being put together and what the hope is as far as accomplishment? Well, I think, I think Teresa captured it really well. We as Alaskans, um, whether you're a native um, Aboriginal Alaskan or just an Alaskan, we know a lot about the differences between the tribes and the village corporations and the regional corporations. But we often find that with many folks moving into Alaska or delegation staff, uh, D.C. staff, right? They're, they work for the Alaska delegation. They're based in D.C., but maybe they're from another state. We're constantly... Uh, and in a good way, we're constantly re-educating an audience about the uniqueness of the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, but more importantly, that tribes were here well before that for thousands of years. And so to articulate the difference between um, Curtis McQueen, the tribal guy, and Curtis McQueen, the shareholder, uh, and Curtis McQueen, the executive, is is a constant, we're, we're, we're storytellers, and our groups often articulate what the story is of today. And that can be following key legislation. Uh, the CARES Act was a, you know, we all came through the COVID thing and the CARES Act for everybody in businesses, for tribes, for ANCs was a really fast paced, uh, chaotic time. Associations like Teresa and mine were able to at least facilitate some of those communications between DC and the state. Um, and so it's really a great collective way to take a large group of people that have an umbilical cord to each other and to make ourselves available to tell our stories. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember during COVID the, the, the accomplishments of the, the tribes and, and the corporations because of their, the resources that were available made a big difference for Alaska that I would be kind of surprised if happened in many other states because, uh, I mean, it, from more vaccine to more facilities to get vaccinated and, and be treated and that kind of thing, it was it was great to to see all of those partnerships. Um, as for the who, what, when, where, why part, um, Curtis, what about what about that? It, when is the symposium? Where is it? Some of those specifics. So we're hosting it in Anchorage. Um, um, we've always, at least on our side, have hosted our meetings in Anchorage because it's uh, it's easier to get to for most folks. We have a lot of the corporate offices here. We have a lot of the executive teams that have offices here, but we do have people that fly in. Um, starting on Tuesday, April 23rd, 24th, and 25th, so the middle of that week, um, we're having it at um, here in Anchorage. It starts off uh, all three days. We'll have different panels and symposiums, and then it's at the Hilton Hotel. Hmm. All right, that's a good location. And um, the, this idea now of of uniting the tribes and the corporations, Teresa, um, and why that's important. You know, to the layperson, that may seem who may not even necessarily recognize the difference between the two, although in Cordova we do. You know, the EAC Corporation, the Native Village of EAC are, are different entities, but but obviously a goal of this is is getting, it kind of it seems like getting everybody on the same page. Why is that a big deal? Well, thank you for that. It is a big deal because, you know, a tribe can reach out and grab funding. Uh, uh, more, more times than not, a village corporation is unable to do that. Their primary focus is their revenue build. However, if a tribe can go out and get the grant uh, funding, uh, they may not have the infrastructure, whereas the village corporation does. Um, I was a previous CEO of a village corporation, and I've, I've spent uh, a couple of years serving as an interim tribal administrator, an, an administrator for uh, a couple of tribes. And I've seen how we, you know, when we're working together, we're going to get more. There were some funds available from USDA that I, as a CEO of a village corporation, may not have been uh, uh, eligible for. But by partnering with the tribe, we became eligible for those funds and were able to bring um, infrastructure into the community. Uh, it, working together and understanding, we're really folk, you know, we're providing services to the same people. Um, you know, and again bringing that uh, uh, funding source in on the tribal side and maybe having the support on the logistics side from the village corporation. Really, really key, key for success. Is that, a, is that a symbiosis that's kind of been challenging in the past or has there been a lot of natural working together over the years in your experience, um, you know, having the corporations and the tribes work together or is that dicey? <laughs> oh, well, it is dicey. And I know Curtis has something to say on that one, but it, you know, sometimes we're told, you know, it's best not to reach out there or, you know, let's kind of keep that separated. 
that might be an older way of thinking because we we, we have to work together. Yeah. And I get that. You know, there might be some you know historical uh, things, but we've got to we've got to address that and and put it behind us and and move forward because again, we're serving the same people. Yeah. Let's work together. And I I I, I saw Curtis smiling there, so I know he has something to add. To that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I, she she is uh, Teresa spot on, and I think that Teresa and I come from the the second generation, the first generation that fought for land claims and and won in 1971. But then the way it was structured was pretty fast paced. Uh, we not to have reservations, but to form corporations. Uh, there was a lot of what does that mean? A couple of decades of trying to figure that out, um, and then we as the same people might serve on our tribal council our tribe, but then we were running for elections to be on our boards, but had a completely different fiduciary type of responsibility. Uh, over here, you've got to make money. You've got to make money for the shareholders. You've got to grow your business and lift them up as well. So take some of your profits and put it into scholarship programs. Take some of your profits and reinvest it back into cultural programs. Most S Corps and America corporations don't have to do that. They do philanthropy, but they really are focused on their bottom line and dividends. We had to learn to finesse those two worlds between the tribal side and our corporate side. And that wasn't easy. And you would have folks that would run purposefully on the tribal side um, for all the reasons they wanted to protect um, subsistence and they wanted to not have land developed and they wanted to keep their village um, from having too many outsiders. And the challenge was Angska took a lot of that land around and put it into the corporate model. So the struggle of us having land within the village core with the idea that it's a asset and you have a fiduciary responsibility to nurture that asset on one hand was not the mission of a tribe. But on the other hand, a lot of us have grown as young executives and trees in my generation, which is okay, the corporation owns the land, so it's part of the corporation, but we also recognize it's Aboriginal and traditional land of the tribe in the area. So many, if not most of us, have been very sensitive to not develop around a village unless a village wants to participate. A village may need some land to do some things. A village may want to create a certain conservation district. And so there are many reasons over the last 50 years that we have been... Um, in the past, forced to be at the same table. I think today, uh, wanting to be at the same table. And so we tend to make lists. I know that at Eklutna, we would have an annual meeting internally where we would take the tribal council, ironically NVE, just like the native village of EAC, the native village of Eklutna, the tribal council and the corporation, and we would put a list up of all the things we agreed would be good missions if we worked together at. And then some of those things fell off to the side. Um, we ended up building a clinic because the corporation had the construction capacity and the design capacity to build a clinic for the tribe. On the other side, the tribe had federal dollars, as Teresa mentioned, to clean up contaminated land, an old military site on our land. So there's been examples where the tribe ends up leading really successful projects uh, that benefit the corporation and then vice versa. The corporation takes its experience, maybe its checkbook and helps lift up the tribe. Yeah, well, it sounds like what what you're describing sounds basically like a learning curve. In the old, you know, in the early days, it was just, you know, it was a new way of doing things or thinking, and and uh, everybody had to kind of try to find their place in it, which is always going to make some people nervous. But uh, as you say, as the generations progress and the real the realization of the importance of working together, as that becomes more prominent, then of course you realize those benefits. So. Um, just to follow up, Curtis, with you about the idea of why it's important to unite tribes and, and village corporations, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I tell you, this even with some Alaskans, this is interesting that it kind of goes off their radar. But um, And don't quote me, I could be wrong on my <laughs> math, but I'm pretty close. <laughs> Out of all the federally recognized tribes in the United States, I think that's about 566 229 of those 566 are based here in Alaska. Mm. That is huge and significant. I mean, for one state to have almost half the population of tribes, and then we're very vastly different in Alaska, right? Ukiabik is very different, and, and living up there and hunting and fishing and trying to survive is very different than down in Southeast where we're, we've got a temperate rainforest. So we find that we often participate in these associations, um, National Congress of American Indians. 
uh, Native Contractors Association, associations that are based in D.C. that represent all of Indian country or all of Native country, but the lower 48 is still sometimes scratching their head on, well, what is an ANC and why are they treated like and um, respected and given some of the same abilities that their tribe has? What What is ANSCA? And sometimes for the lower 48 tribes, that is something that's been an issue in the past. And so for us up here, do a better story or do a better job of telling our story. But for us to demonstrate on the ANSCA side that we are tribal people, that we love the tribal side of our world, we need to be more involved and support our tribal folks. We need to support folks like Teresa Jacobson. And so that when we go down to these big meetings in lower 48, it's our tribes getting up on the stage and talking about Alaska more than it is for profit ANCs. And so a conference like this is where Teresa and I saw some incredible synergy, not only to celebrate our story today, but to take that story out of Alaska and educate the lower 48. Okay. And Teresa, good. I don't know if I captured that. Yeah, I was going to say she's Beautiful. nodding. She's, she's Beautiful. thumbing us up. Anything to add there, Teresa? Uh, just, you know, it, it, I appreciate that. I appreciate that the, you know, with ANCSA, you know, tribes were left uh, without. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the, uh, the, you know, Curtis's statement about lifting the tribes up and giving them that voice that they need, um, specifically with ATAA, the, the voice of a tribal administrator. And I will tell anybody that, that, that listens uh, uh, to me that I think Alaska's most challenging position is that of a tribal administrator. Mm. Um, and uh, having the support is key and, and getting the word out outside of Alaska on how this structure works. And it works for us up here it, and it works well. And we're continuing to see that build and build and build. And if you've noticed, and Curtis, I know you know this, any of the conferences that have been going on, not just here in Alaska, but elsewhere regarding our, our world has been talking about unification, collaboration, working together. It's starting to happen more and more. So this is really exciting, and the timing is just phenomenal. So, yeah, uh, big thumbs up, Curtis, to that, uh, uh, to that um, information. And, and, and if, I might, if, if I might add, because I think this is really important, and it, this gets lost because ANCs get a lot of um, uh, press, and that is watch the tribes. The tribes are becoming very successful at business. The tribes are becoming very successful at buying uh, businesses, uh, building organizations, going after government contracting. I really believe, I mean, if there's only, uh, there could be a day that tribes are generating by themselves more revenue and more jobs in the state of Alaska than ANCs are. We employ, we're probably one of the largest employers in the state of Alaska now, native corporations, but I don't think people pay attention to the tribe stats. And I think those are growing and very impressive. And so this is another way to, to for my generation to get out and say, if we're not working with the tribal side of ourselves, we're gonna miss a train that I think is gonna be pretty impressive over the next two decades. Sure, well, and I mean, we've seen that with the growth of the native village of EAC in Cordova over the years and all of the things that, that they have been doing, uh, expanding medical care opportunities for everybody, not just for, not just for members. And uh, they had the newspaper for a while. And uh, so they, they're, and the, the employment too. I mean, it, it seems like just about everybody I talk to that has changed jobs has taken a bill, you know, a native village of Yak position from, from somewhere else in the private sector or somewhere else. So uh, it really has been very impressive. You hit on something real quick that I do want to share. The fact that we're working with our tribes, some of our people have worked for a corporation and have worked for their tribe and go back to a tribe. So the synergy of the training and the experience that we get in our jobs, uh, I've worked for my tribe and I've worked for a corporation. And I know Therese has been a CEO of a corporation. So there's the same pool of people that we can educate, we can train uh, and, and, and can educate us that end up working for both. So, so I, I appreciate you raising that point that employment is a key thing. Yeah, yes. yeah, it really is. Um, Teresa, I, I was kind of scrolling through the list of people who are supposed to be showing up, um, and you've got some important voices for the symposium. So, so who are some of the people who are going to speak? Who, well, who's going to be there in general, and then, and then, you know, who who are some of your special guests? 
Well, we should have uh, both uh, sets of board of directors for both ANVCA and ATAA. Uh, we have uh, uh, folks from EPA um, coming. There's some important things there related to tribal programs and contaminated lands and funding. There's a lot of money coming in uh, to the state from there. We have uh, Congresswoman Peltola speaking on day three. She's going to be here in person. We have our chiefs of staff um, uh, for our Alaska delegation. They will be there all three days uh, and really appreciative to Curtis for um, rounding that up and, and making sure that they're there to hear what this audience has to say. And this is rural Alaska. This is the audience. And they're going to ask questions about how the money is coming in, um, how it's going to be utilized and provide their input. Uh, one of the things that we talked about this with uh, the 8A program, I uh, met with the director and deputy director for the SBA, I believe last week here in our offices and discussed their program and let them know, hey, we're going to start sharing with tribes uh, the, the, the process for getting into the uh, 8A program. Uh, one of the tribes that I'm currently working with, I received permission to, I served as interim for about a year and I received permission to um, uh, uh, split some of the positions of the tribal administrator and build a business manager position. So we have the administrative and the people side, the, the, the tribal member side, and then we also have our business side. And I think you're going to see more and more of those models in Alaska as tribes get ready to have their to build their own revenue. So they have unrestricted money uh, coming into their um, communities. And then just one of the things that we're going to be talking about, we've got a bank coming in to talk about uh, for tribes, the importance of building a relationship with your financial institution. That's going to be key as you move forward and start developing your own business. So, um, you know, uh, we're going to talk about working and teaming together, ANCs and tribes. That's going to be really, really wonderful um, and, and a, a lot more. But everybody that's on our website, uh, we've confirmed those folks as attending and speaking. Good. Well, and it must have really been, it must have been a pretty special moment for you to see Mary Piltola get elected, huh? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good, Curtis. Yeah, I see you grinning. Pretty yeah. big deal, huh? It was really big deal. First of all, uh, I had fortunate to watch her work as a legislator down in Juneau for several years. Um, and, and this is just Curtis speaking, it's my perspective, but sure. I did see uh, the other aisle reach across to her. I saw her reach across to the other aisle. Um, um, so I thought that there was that person who could, could do that. And then she had tremendous respect for a Congressman Don Young, which a lot of us did, do, most of us do, and I did. And Don Young had tremendous respect for her. And when she ran and campaigned, um, she also so far um, has followed through on some of the important things that were important to Don Young. Yeah. And, you know, as tough of, of a, a tough bird that Don Young was, um, he did reach across the aisle. I mean, yeah. he did work with the other side. And I think to have someone uh, of native uh, to come in and try to um, respect what he was to Alaska, um, to me, is very important. Doesn't mean I'm going to agree with everything all the time. Oh, sure. But no, uh, for Alaska Native community, it was a pretty exciting moment. Uh, any additional thoughts, Curtis, on um, you know who's going to be there, the topics, the issues, the the panels? Yeah. Uh, elaborate on that. Well, it, 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 this has been fun and exciting for me, and, and there's a little bit of challenge. So Teresa, and, and I give her most of the credit, <laughs> to try to take uh, two meetings and merge them to one means that we're, we give up half the space. Uh, mm. So we don't a, I don't have as much space to have as many breakout panels as we've done in the past. Teresa doesn't have as much space because of some of I. But what we've done is to try to complement what we think is going to be the never ending story. And so I'm excited about what Teresa mentioned, you know, on the chief of staffs, how sausage made? I mean, do people really understand what a chief of staff's role really is? I mean, they're the main person who's got to wrangle and hire most of the team and manage the team of vast, you know, you've got lawyers that specialize in different type of committees, but the chief of staff is the one confidant of the congressional position. They also interact with the other chief of staff. So it'd be interesting to hear, you know, what are some of the other states that we're close with that align with Alaska? Washington state and Alaska often don't. You would think by our proximity, we would, but often some of the lawmakers in Alaska, and I'm not naming and I'm not saying anything negative, but they try to lock up Alaska. Mm. And and so we find that some of our our, our other states far away on the East Coast support, of course, the Monta Montanas and the Wyomings because they have strong indigenous bases. The other thing 
I'm excited about, but it's a serious, serious conversation, and that's revenue sharing. So the way um, ANSCA was set up was that the 12 regions would be sharing revenue on certain resources. So for instance, the Red Dog Mine up in Kotzebue right now, I think, and please don't hold me to these numbers, I'm going <laughs> off my memory, but I think 40% of what they generate in revenue, 40% goes and gets shared amongst the other 11 regions. So NANA is cutting a check to 11 other regions on a portion of their natural resource extraction. Then each one of those regions cut a smaller check to each village corp underneath them. Some village corporations, that is the majority of the revenue that they have on a yearly basis to even be viable, to pay a phone bill, to open up, have a door open. Well, we're we're on a virtual cliff, meaning that in the early days of Sea Alaska and timber was revenue shared, 1971, instantly the Tongass was being um, uh, cut down and that was being shared amongst the other regions. Well, now you've got some of the regions that are doing some big things, but uh, what's the next revenue share? If the predictions of the Red Dog are true, that maybe five to seven years from now, uh, they will no longer have an, be mining minerals on Nana land. They may move over to state land if the state and them can work something out, but that's not shareable. It's only Angska land. So what's going to happen to a lot of these small village corps? Donlin, right? So that's why Donlin has been such a big discussion. In the Chalista region, Chalista um, is moving forward with trying to mine uh, its resources with Donlin. If that happens, then that becomes a shareable, a revenue shareable resource for all of the angst corporations. If it doesn't happen, what's next in the pipeline? We're going to have a panel that's going to talk about some stats of what, what's been shared in the past, um, what's currently being done, and moreover, what's the future look like? And the future's pretty scary. Mm. So that's an important topic. And so not only is it it's not just important for people in the audience that are wearing their Angska hat, but for the tribal folks, because often the tribal folks will benefit from their corporations having enough money to donate to their programs and their projects. Well, what if their corporations don't? So that's a pretty serious topic. We have a lot of fun and exciting things to talk about, but that's a sure. pretty serious topic that I'm I'm really interested in seeing how that plays out. Yeah. Well, and you've mentioned the audience a couple of times, and maybe, Teresa, who who is the audience? Is it people that are working for villages or working for tribes and, and corporations, or is it anybody that's a member of any of the above? So primar for, on the ATA side, it is primarily tribal administrators or whatever title the tribe has given that individual, that key individual, executive director, general manager, tribal coordinator, tribal administrator. Oftentimes we'll see them with their tribal council. Uh, we see a lot of accountants from the tribes that show up, program people as well, uh, especially if we have, let's say we have HUD come in, we know we have HUD come in and speak. Uh, so that's our audience. And then uh, individuals who work with tribes. They might not necessarily uh, be a member of a tribe or currently working in a tribe, but we do have some of those individuals that, uh, you know, this is their this has been their wheelhouse and they want to get updates. And we allow that as well. OK, Curtis, can you think of anybody else? Yeah, I, I think I think on our side, very similar to what Teresa said, that is going to be. Uh, boards of directors and executive teams of the village corporations, some of their staff. Um, we often want to see our different departments grow, so we encourage our teams to go to some of these events because there might they might be in a finance department and they can meet other folks from another finance department and share what's the latest and greatest. They might be on a construction team, project managers. We have a lot of contracting uh, companies within ANCs, so there's a lot of that that uh, pollinization that I think is really important. But we also have a lot of businesses, great Alaska companies that do businesses with ANCs. And they uh, track what we do. Um, we are clients of theirs. Sometimes um, they're uh, our clients, um, the big accounting firms we might use. So we're going to see not a huge percentage, but probably some of our business partners that are Alaska based and maybe even some in the lower 48 that come to want to be visible at the conference, want to demonstrate that it's an important subject to them because they do business with us. OK. And, um, you know, is is that's that's a lot of different folks in in a lot of different areas. And Curtis, as you mentioned, there are going to be a variety of different talks uh, on on some lighter subjects, some heavier subjects. 
What, though, would you say, Curtis, is is what you would, if, if there was something that an attendee was going to take away from this at the end of the three days, what, what do you hope that is? Well, I think, I think Teresa and I are united in trying to make sure that what the folks take away uh, is, I mean, this is a once in a lifetime experience we're all having in history on the amount of federal dollars coming to the state of Alaska. Record dollars, right? Build back better, infrastructure bill, broadband bill, contaminated lands bill. I mean, I've heard numbers as much as over $5 billion is coming into Alaska, and most of that is going to be touching uh, Indian country, uh, Alaska Native country. Uh, For us, it's going to be to be able to articulate uh, what the different pockets of money are, the different agencies that are responsible to deliver that money, who to talk to. So, you know, we have the Department of Energy is going to be there strong. We have the EPA that's going to be there strong. We have broadband people that are going to be there strong. Then there's the state of Alaska. We work very close with the state of Alaska. So um, we're going to have Lieutenant Governor Nancy Dalston there. Um, but we're also going to have folks that serve on the state of Alaska broadband. So the state of Alaska got over a billion dollars to improve broadband. Uh, the Alaska Native community got a, over a billion dollars. Well, we don't want to duplicate building the same thing. So there's a lot of synergy, and, and we have to figure all that out. Um, this is moving so fast that I'm not aware of yet a large gathering that is focusing on trying to articulate what that matrix is and how to maneuver through it. And I'm not guaranteeing that people are going to leave this meeting and say, I, I've got all the answers, I figured it out. Yeah. But we will be able to connect them, or we will at least put them in the same space that if they have the tenacity to go figure out how to be connected, there'll be people there, including booths and that type of thing. So it's really, I think it's going to be about the money coming into Alaska, the impact it's going to have, um, and, and how to understand, uh, position yourself to get your share of it. Well, and I really like and what Chisa you might said. Have a comment too. Oh yeah, no, I'm 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 going to ask. I I want to reinforce something that you said because it's been a principle in Cordova. I've seen one of the first ones that I noticed after moving in in '92 um, was how important synergy between organizations was and avoiding duplicating efforts. And I like what you said about that. If if if, uh, you know, person A gets a million bucks to do a thing and person B, well, you said billion, a billion duck bucks to do a thing and person B gets a billion bucks. Why do two versions of the million dollar idea when you can do one version of the two billion dollar idea and and then work together so everybody gets much more than the than the sum of the parts? And that's something, you know, that agencies in Cordova avoiding duplicating efforts has has always been important here and it, it's it's one of the first things that i i noticed about the the character and the quality of the community so i i'm excited by you know hearing that idea now teresa definitely want to see what it is that the what are you what are you hoping people come away from the symposium having learned or experienced one of my greatest hopes is that um we're building connection and we're starting to have that dialogue and feel comfortable in communicating between the tribes and the village corporations because that's where it starts. Um, one entity could have all the money in the world, but if the two aren't speaking to each other to, to help support that onboard of uh, revenue or funding, if you will, um, you know, it, it's going to go slower. You know, and it may not work very well. We work better when we work together. That's going to be a very, very large one with the amount of money that the tribes have had because of the pandemic and the amount of money that's coming in now, uh, EPA related and that type of thing, tribal broadband. Um, I, I would like to see the tribes uh, really uh, get a, get a, a, a good uh, grounded uh, understanding of um, managing that amount of money and becoming those fiduciaries um, and really leading by example in um, being able to manage those types, not only that, that amount of funding, but those types of projects. And in order to do so, you have to build those relationships. So that's going to be key because many, you know, we have so many tribes and many of them are so isolated. This is the once a year event for our tribal coordinators and staff and council to get together. And like Curtis said, you know, uh, connect and find out what's going on in the industry. You know, I didn't know that QuickBooks had this new version or what have you, but you're getting those tidbits, you know, and oh, I I didn't realize you did that. I don't need to do that then because you're telling me that that works well, good, we're gonna go that way. 
That's the big piece for me and that people understand how critical their job is because they're not just going to be feeling it. They're not just doing it for today. This work that they're doing now is going to be felt for generations to come. That's how critical this conference and the information that's going to come out from it is. And that to me, that's everything. It's everything. Yeah. Yeah. The timing with that, with that massive amount of funding that you described earlier, because, uh, yeah, you have the potential to put some things in place that, like you said, are going to last a real long time. Well, obviously, people can't participate if they don't get registered. So first off, who should register for this? Teresa, I'll, I'll put that to you. Who, who should register and why? I would say that anybody that's interested, you go to the website, ruralalaska.net. Take a look at uh, the uh, agenda items and the breakout items. Um, you know, if this is something that's in your industry, you work in a village corporation or a regional corporation, an ANC or a tribe or a tribal nonprofit, and you're interested in this, go ahead and register. There's information that you can take back to your community. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of different individuals who aren't related to any of the uh, organizations, but have an interest in it. So I would say, you know, and uh, the early bird ends April, I think April 2nd. Yeah. I would grab that before it goes up. Um, and uh, you can register through the website. Okay. Um, you have any other thoughts on that, uh, Curtis, people that are good prospects uh, for registering? I, I, I think, I think, I think Teresa hit it. I think if you're interested in a snapshot in 2024, in the spring of 2024, in a three-day window to get caught up on what's happening in the Native community when it comes to tribes and when it comes to the corporations, the village corporations, um, um, some of the things that uh, we'll celebrate and some of the challenges that we still face, you'll be, for three days, you'll be in that environment. You will know and I think that's really important because um, the Native community has become such an incredible force in the economy of Alaska, but also the culture is being celebrated. Look what's happening in tourism. I mean, Cordova gets a lot of people, I, I, I assume, in tourism. But, you know, the Alaska Native community is really starting to be have businesses in tourism. And we're going to be talking about some of that. You've got a village corporation out of a little community in Huna, Alaska that now has one of the premier destinations for all the cruise lines to come to that village, dock there and go up on top of a mountain and come down catamarans. That little village corporation has now partnered with Doyon, which is the regional corporation for the interior. And Doyon is doing tourism because of being close to Denali. They are now joining forces to build tourism docks in Whittier and other places. So here you've got what used to be a small little guy and a big guy now on equal terms going and doing some major things in tourism. There'll be things like that shared. The other thing I think that's worth uh, celebrating, um, and it was tough for the state of Alaska, but in the fall of, I believe it was 2022, the governor did sign the bill. And we as Alaska Native um, people were very proud of the legislature who recognized that tribes, uh, government to government relations was valuable. And when they formalized that and they formally recognized what they basically did is say, we recognize that not only are you, your tribe, a government, but oh my gosh, you could get federal road money. You could get federal money that can help the state offset some of its budget. And maybe the state can't afford to do some of these things because they do get federal dollars. But if the native community gets it too, and back to let's be synergistic, now you've got native communities doing road work off federal dollars that the state couldn't get mm -hmm. and so i think to tell that story about um government to government uh, i think is very important and here in anchorage that's being witnessed by the native village of the Klutna, which now meets quarterly with the anchorage assembly and the city of anchorage recognizes them as a government mm -hmm. and that's created all kinds of new conversations from funding um to um all kinds of issues and you I think you said earlier, if you can't get to the table, you can't talk about it. And at least now the government to government relations is saying you're at the table, whether you like it or not. Now let's yeah. talk about it. And I think that's going to be nothing but positive. Yeah, it certainly seems like it, regardless of what kind of a road got you there, um, which has certainly been a challenging road. But the point is we're here now where we recognize it and we have the opportunity to go forward. Uh, just so we're sure what as far as where you register, Curtis, is that on the is that on the website? It it is. It, it's on the website um, that um, was referenced uh, a little while ago, and you can also go to the um, 
ANBCA, uh, uh, www.anbca.biz. So our regular website has a link right on the top page. Teresa and her team have helped me do that. It's, they're amazing. You can go that way. You can go to the ATAA website, Teresa's website. It's got a link. It's directing you to the same page that Teresa's team created for this event. And then as she mentioned, uh, www.ruralalaska.net. Yeah. And that is the page. And we're trying um, to do a good job of putting it out there on Facebook and, and we're putting it out there on our LinkedIn and and Teresa's got an amazing team, which I don't have, that can do that. <laughs> and so that's been great to have. Uh, I'm not, um, I'm a little gray in the social media world, but oh, I'm man. having to learn a lot just by this. Don't even get me started <laughs> on that. Well, the, the, and, you, and then you mentioned there's an early bird deadline, Teresa, April 2nd. So what, if people register a little earlier, they can save some money? Uh, yeah, I think it's a little over a hundred bucks. Well worth it. Okay. So by April 2nd, uh, it would be good if you want to participate to go to that website and, uh, and do your registration when you can, when it's not as expensive, but I mean, from what you're talking about, even if you miss that early deadline, it's still a pretty big, you're going to get your money's worth out of this. It sounds like. So let's, uh, let's go to, to final thoughts and we're going to give Teresa the last, last word. So Curtis, you know, as we, as we put a bow on it here, uh, you know, reflect on what we've discussed and what do you want to leave us with? Well, I, I think I think um, great questions, and I, I think we've done a good job of articulating. I think um, it's historical for ANBCA to partner with ATAA. Um, we may not do that next year, but we're not we're celebrating that this year, and we're going to see how that goes. But I don't think that's ever been done. And there's been some small unity conferences that have been popping up. This will be the biggest one. We've anticipated to be prepared for as much as 400 uh, attendees. Uh, that's there may there may be more. There may be a little less. We've got the room at the Hilton to do that. Um, the other thing, there is a deadline for ours, and that is we are having an election. And so uh, we've been posting it out there. We have six board seats up out of nine. If you're interested in running for the board, you have to be a CEO or a chairperson of your village corporation. You have to get a letter of interest to ANBCA by April 5th. Teresa and her team have been putting that out there. So we've been giving people plenty of notices of that. Um, that's the cutoff after April 5th. We'd love to have you attend, but you won't be able to run for the board if you're interested in running for the board. Um, otherwise, I think that um, to bring DC, the state of Alaska, Indian country, both the tribe and the village corporations all in the same room, this is different than an AFN. This is not about policy literally driven. I mean, we may talk about some of that, um, but this is really about the tribes and the villages and how we team together. Okay. Well, Teresa, uh, how would you how would you characterize you know what you want to to leave people with at the end of this conversation? What are your final thoughts? I appreciate that. I would like to see the people who attend here leave with uh, uh, a new breath, if you will, uh, that they're encouraged and that they're um, empowered and uh, that they have um, uh, more energy. And, and ideas to move forward in their positions, because sometimes it's real lonely when you're doing this work as a village corporation CEO and as a, a tribal administrator. Um, and sometimes there, you know, there isn't a lot of um, uh, support, you know, lonely at the top kind of a thing. I think this is going to be very, very encouraging. It's going to give people ideas when they go back to their community uh, and, and understand what the focus is of a conference, like Curtis said, is you know, how can we get these two entities to work together for the betterment of their, their respective communities? Um, but I, again, like I said earlier, the, the hope is that, you know, we're breathing more life into what we have to do as we move forward for our state, uh, uh, considering how much revenue Indigenous people do bring into the state. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, work together to make that happen and be encouraged by what we do. And like I say to anybody that I, I talk with in these industries, thank you for your good work uh and and i hope that they understand that, that that i'm always grateful for the good work that happens and the synergy between these two entities i'm just i'm really looking forward to it and it's going to there's going to be some challenging um a discussion but there's also going to be encouraging discussion because we want to leave that, that we want to leave with people lifted good 
Well, and I mean, in my experience, um, you know, I saw a similar idea take shape with the Alaska Broadcasters Association, which was largely, you know, when when we'd have our convention each year, uh, it was originally it was just mostly the commercial broadcasters, and a lot of the public stations were didn't participate in that. And then I don't know how many years ago they decided to bring the two together, and it's done nothing but grow and 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 help facilitate understanding ever since then. Uh, and there was never any question, as far as I know, about going back. So I would certainly hope you'd see that same thing, that people recognize the value of that synergy and are like, yeah, we, have, we definitely want to do something together each year, even if it isn't our annual meeting, something. Um, you know, and that idea of not duplicating effort and, and, uh, and working together, I've, I, just, I, I have never, in my experience, I haven't seen that fail. I certainly haven't seen it make things worse. So... Um, I, I think there's a lot of reason for optimism. You got me all jazzed up, and I don't even know anything hardly about this. So this is great. Thank you so much for both of you for giving us a chance to share this information and, and participate in, in getting the word out. And I absolutely wish you all success. If there's any follow-up to do, by the way, please let me know, and, uh, and we'll get together again. Really good, good talking to both of you. Thank you well, so th- much. thank you very much. Thank you very much, and and you should be very proud of both the tribe and the corporation, uh, with the EAC people. I mean, you go to D.C. and you hear EAC quite a bit, so they have been a force to reckon with, and we notice that. All right. yes. Teresa Jacobson founder and director of the Alaska Tribal Administrators Association, Curtis McQueen, executive director of the Alaska Native Village Corporation Association, talking about their symposium coming up April 23rd to 25th at the Hilton in Anchorage. You can learn all about it at that very important website, ruralalaska.net. That's an easy one, ruralalaska.net. And any of you joining us for the delayed on-demand playback on the YouTube channel, which, of course, we always do in case you end up joining the program midway or want to hear it again or want to pass it along to somebody that you think you that might have missed it when it, was, when it was on the radio. We don't care how you hear this. We just want you to hear this. And we will put that website in the description of that video. But again, it's real easy, ruralalaska.net. I hope you found that conversation as invigorating as I did. And even if you're not, involved with the types of entities that are described in the program. The emphasis on working together, on combining resources to make more of an impact than either could by themselves, not to beat this point to death, but that idea, you know, I, 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 I love that idea of, uh, you know, if I get a grant to build a baseball field and you get a grant to build a baseball field, we could both hoard our grants and build two eh -eh, baseball fields or combine the grants to build one incredible facility that everybody gets to use. Maybe that has two fields and better grandstands and a big sign and, you know, a concession stand or whatever, you know, I mean, it's that kind of thing doing something that is more than the sum of the parts. Cordova has been good at doing that for a long time. And whether any of us that are in business or, I mean, the Chamber of Commerce knows this 100%, but businesses, organizations working together instead of trying to scratch out turf, I'm a big believer in that. And and I, I, I really think, well, I know for myself that this conversation generated a lot of inspiration that I'd love to see applied across the board in all kinds of different scenarios. And I'm really glad that Teresa and Curtis were able to take time out of their extremely busy preparation for all of this to visit with us here about this and benefit Cordova with that inspiration. And, and more specifically, I hope, inspiration for anyone involved in the entities that they mention, whether the Native Village or the the Native Corporation, anybody peripherally involved with those entities that might benefit from this. Learn more at RuralAlaska.net. Speaking of an entity that makes a difference, Cordova Wireless Communications and Cordova Telecom Cooperative not only provide 
all of the various communication services that they provide, but they are an entity that simply by existing and having us as members generates a whole lot of outside income. You know, we were talking in the show about outside dollars coming in to benefit Alaska. CTC and Cordova Wireless bring somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 million outside dollars into Cordova that then circulates around through our community. And we don't have to harvest anything or cut anything down or dig anything up or any of that. This happens. And the fact that they're willing to support our show here so we can bring you programming like this, that's a big plus, and we thank them very much for that. Obviously, we missed a few things over the course of this hour that uh, you are owed. Fish radio, calendar, classifieds, that's all coming up. Kind of delay things a little bit. You know, we'll have to squeeze parts of the schedule together, but we'll get it all in. want to thank you again for joining us for the town meeting, whether you're listening on the radio or on demand at youtube.com slash Cordova TV. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.